Less than 50 meters to the left of these Jawans of the Kumau Regiment, at the bottom of the precipice on their side, is the line of control in the Uri sector of Jammu and Kashmir. And just below the narrow track they are walking on is the actual fence, the first line of defense against infiltrators, terrorists, who have one goal. Observe the movements of the Indian Army's patrols, cut through the fence, enter India, attack the army and other high-value targets at any cost. It's a cat-and-mouse game, a game of brinkmanship. Who will make the first mistake? Our defenders by letting down their guard or the infiltrators if their movements are detected. Very soon, twilight turns to nightfall, but the soldiers keep going. Each Jawan alert to the faintest sound that may indicate movement of the enemy. These men know this track like the back of their hand. Each turn, each obstacle, even in pitch darkness. Thermal images like the one I'm peering into are huge force multipliers at night, providing clear, magnified views of Pakistani positions which are easily visible during the day. There used to be an old saying which used to be true till a few years back. When it's winter and the passes are covered with snow, then chances are that infiltration would actually come down. But that's all changed now. Terrorists from Pakistan come across into our territory, whether it's summer or winter, and the presence of snow doesn't matter at all. They come in better equipped and with proper snow clothing, which is why soldiers like these soldiers of the Kumau Regiment are on patrol. 24-7, summer or in winter. What happened in December last year at an altitude of 14,000 feet in the Nogam sector of Baramulla came as a shock for the army, an indicator of what was to come. Six foreign terrorists who were eventually eliminated had come equipped with Swiss-made snow clothing and boots, digital navigation consoles, satellite phones, high-energy food, more weaponry and ammunition than ever seen before per terrorist. And the terrorists who killed eight Jawans and three policemen in the Mora camp in Uri on December 9th were skillful soldiers whose movements on the ground as they broke into the army base clearly showed that they had been well trained. These weren't just terrorists wearing a suicide bomb vest. If I go back to my past experience here as a brigade commander on the line of control, almost a decade back, and if I were to compare it with now, earlier it would be, for example, with the sports kind of GPS. Now mm. they are coming with absolutely high technology GPSs, for example. Then the kind of communications that they are using, which also is of a better quality, and uh, the reliance on radio sets is bare minimal. It's only for shall we say, the terminal stages of the communication. Most of it is happening over VoIP, over Skype and things like that. Even uh, we are finding on occasions that they are carrying night vision goggles, night vision equipment, which are absolutely things, you know, which are new. For soldiers on the ground, like 38-year-old Colonel Abhijit, who leads his men right on the front, intercepting terrorists or laying an ambush is now far tougher. For starters, radio intercepts of terrorists inside Indian territory are less frequent. Infiltrators maintain radio silence till they are more than 10 kilometers inside India. And while operating right on the LOC, they pick up signals from Pakistani cell phone towers, log on to WhatsApp or Skype to communicate with their handlers, making it very difficult, if not impossible, for our soldiers to gain intelligence on enemy movements. The area behind us, just behind us, is Pakistan, right? So where exactly does the, the line of control pass? Uh, well, as you can see, the ridges right across us uh, where we are standing are where the Pakistani posts are located. Uh -huh. And at places, because of the peculiarity of the terrain, mm -hmm. uh, there are certain places where the enemy dominates us and there are certain places where our posts dominate the enemy. The line of control essentially flows behind us right. along the Nala that as you can see. Right, and, and so the, the, that's the Nala just, just down over there. And that's also a concern for you as a possible route for infiltration. 
Uh, well, it does uh, because uh, the way the terrain is, there are places where the vegetation is dense, they are folded in the ground where the movement cannot be picked up. So in that sense, the terrain does pose challenges to us to detect infiltration. It's been a long, cold winter with record levels of snow in many parts of the state over the last few weeks. For Jawans deployed in tiny posts that dot the LOC here on the Uri front, keeping alert is the difference between life and death. Major Vignesh, a young officer at this post, knows it's his job to keep his men ready for any challenge, always. First and foremost, an officer has to uh, lead in front, lead from front uh, in, the, in the army, in the Indian army. And uh, uh, being an uh, Indian army officer, being an infantarian, I have to, uh, I have to uh, keep the momentum high of the boys. And uh, I definitely move uh, post to post. Uh, it's not a static location. I keep moving to the forward locations and uh, stay with the boys. And then there are friends like this, mountain dogs, often the best early warning system. That, that's quite interesting. These dogs uh, actually play a, an important part. They, they, they are the uh, best people here who actually give the early warnings. Huh. So they actually help and support us huh. and enhance the, uh, huh. uh, the early warning capability of the post. And, and they bark 500 meters from a distance. I mean, if you're 500 meters away, they still bark. Definitely. Though a host of motion sensors and unmanned aerial vehicles also give the army real-time alerts of terrorists who may have cut through the fence, the line of control is long, and as is clear by just looking at the terrain all around us, it's impossible for sensors to be installed across each inch on the line. Ultimately, the army is clear. There is no substitute, none at all, for men like this, boots on the ground and eyes on the enemy. In the Uri sector with cameraman Amir Amin, Vishnu Shom for NDTV. As it guards our frontiers, the army is having to recognize that the level of infiltration, the quality of the infiltration that is now taking place is perhaps at a different level than it's been in the past. The infiltrators coming across in the incidents that have taken place are better equipped, perhaps more motivated, and are equipped even with better clothing. To tell us how the Indian Army is responding to this threat, I'm joined by uh, the man who commands the 15 Corps. He looks after the counterinsurgency grid in a large part of Kashmir, Lieutenant General Subroto Sa. Thank you very much, sir, for speaking to us. Is it a real concern for us in terms of the, the, the nature of the insurgents coming across? How are they better? How are they different than what we've seen in the past? Oh, well, uh, firstly, in terms of... Uh, the equipment that they are, you know, uh, the wherewithal that they carry with them, that certainly there is, uh, you can say, some some kind of infusion of better technology. Uh, for instance, for navigation, they are using good quality of GPSs. I mean, if I go back to my past experience here as a brigade commander on the line of control, almost a decade back, and if I were to compare it with now, earlier it would be, for example, with those sports kind of GPS. Now they are coming with absolutely high technology GPSs, for example, then the kind of communications that they are using, which also is of a better quality, and uh, the reliance on radio sets is bare minimal. It's only for, shall we say, the terminal stages of the communication. Most of it is happening over VoIP, over Skype, and things like that. Even uh, we are finding on occasions that they are carrying night vision uh, goggles, night vision equipment, which are absolutely things, you know, which are new. And in terms of weaponry, well, depending on the circumstances, so sometimes when we see, you can read a clear special mission, you know, in a particular infiltration group, mm -hmm. you'll see they are equipped with that kind of weapons. For example, last year, uh, we had a lot which had come with, two, you know, two shotguns, barrels cut. Obviously, the intention was to cause large number of injuries mm -hmm. rather than death possibly, you know, because uh, why would they carry uh, 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 LG kind of a weapon? Right. Then on occasions we have seen uh, the number of grenades, for example, are more. Then on occasions we have seen uh, these people coming in with specially equipped clothing for walking over snow. I mean, top to bottom. Last year again in the Nogam sector we had seen a track which had come in specifically, you know, prepared to cross a huge stretch over snow. So if you look at it from every dimension, whether it is in terms of surveillance, communications, 
their ways of gathering intelligence, navigation. Mm -hmm. you, you do see a technological upgrade in that right. sense. And so, uh, therefore, General, when you are confronted with a scenario in the state where there is a political dialogue, a political uh, calling for ASPA to go away or, or to be reduced in particular states, uh, it must be difficult for you uh, to ha in, in, in order that you balance your requirements to secure our country and our frontiers and meet a political requirement which is outside your realm of operation. Well, on this, uh, without getting into the dimensions in which you asked the question, perhaps, let me just highlight two points. Uh, firstly, yes, no doubt, uh, things have improved. Uh, there is a sense of stability. And uh, the point that we should not lose sight of is that this uh, sense of peace and stability is coming with colossal effort and indeed a huge price at times. Uh, if you look at 2014, for example, uh, there were 101 terrorists killed, of course, bulk being on the line of control in counter-infiltration, and about yet another 45 uh, in terms of surrender apprehensions, all told 146, you know, neutralized, which was higher than the last three years, indeed four years, in fact, much higher. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the success in the infiltration rate, uh, in the infiltration, so to say, uh, 65 of them are assessed to have succeeded, whereas in the previous year it was 97, and the year previous it was 121. So the point that I'm making is this semblance of peace, stability, is coming with colossal efforts. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it can be sustained without, you know, sustaining a similar level of effort is something which obviously we need to Can look at. Can it be sustained? And, uh, and the next issue which I want to highlight over here is, you know, ASPA is not alone by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, ASPA is there along with a very clearly defined set of do's and don'ts, which, uh, if I remember right, are based on a Supreme Court uh, regulation yes. of 1997, based on which we have our rules of engagement, based on which we have the standard operating procedures. So ASPA is actually not... A uh, standalone. It it comes along with various, you know, checks, uh, rules of engagement, and uh, standard operating procedures. So, I, 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 as long as we are looking at it, both from the law point of view, and at the same time from the security situation point of view, I think uh, we'll get it right. But Jerry, let me ask you a direct question: Would you be able to secure our frontiers in the manner that you do if apps were to be diluted in any way in your area of operation? Uh, as long as, as I said we are making sure that all the factors that contribute to sustaining the security are ensured. And of course, from uh, the military point of view, as long as ASPA comes along with all the uh, checks and safeguards, I think it's a pretty good way ahead. Are you disheartened when you see separatists let out of jail? People who were detained no longer being in detention? Well, uh, more I'm talking about uh, Bhatt, of course, and I mean, is that something that, that, that concerns you? Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see as to what does this manifest on the ground. So, uh, unless that manifests into something, you know, alarming or disturbing, it would be premature to comment on that. But is it disheartening at a particular level? Because you fight separatists, that's your job. Uh, you fight terrorists as well. Um, and therefore, when people are released, uh, does that not affect you at some level? as a commander of men? You see, well, uh, there may be a nexus amongst them, but I would not look at them as, as overlapping in that sense. Uh, what do you mean, sir? A, a nexus amongst them? You see, uh, the, the point is we are, we are countering terrorism yes. in the hinterland, and we are countering infiltration along the line of control. Uh, so strictly, that is the domain in which the army operates. OK. So you don't want to be drawn into uh, to, to this larger issue. I, I take your point. Uh, I take your point over there. Let's turn our focus back to what, uh, you know, we started discussing. Let's talk a little bit more about how you are reacting to the higher level of infiltration uh, coming in, not in terms of numbers necessarily, but in terms of the skill or the ability. Uh, what does this mean for, for your soldiers and your patrols having to operate uh, along the LC? Yeah, this, uh, first of all, of course, you know, uh, quite clearly we need to uh, improve, and which we are doing, uh, the intelligence gathering mechanism. And in that, uh, the most important thing, which I think with over so many years having gone into it, uh, that we seem to have got it right now, is the synergy between the different int agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, the regularity with which we meet, uh, formally, informally, and otherwise, the frequency with which we share the information, and the speed with which we do it is much better than what uh, I think over, the pe over, over a period of time things have improved on that count. Mm -hmm. 
And likewise, even the mechanisms and the capabilities for gathering the int have definitely improved. Uh, the measures for surveillance that are there along the line of control, you've been there, yes. you may have seen some of it. Uh, that also has certainly improved. Uh, we have much better quality of surveillance equipment today. And even as we speak, this winter, we are carrying out the trials for the new anti-infiltration ob obstacle system, which would be a definite upgrade over what uh, we have now. This one, as you know, is of 2003, 4, 5 vintage. So it's grown old. And as we, have, we are seeing, the other side has the adversary has also, you know, kind of fought up. So that's why we are going in for some very good quality upgrade. It's going to be a nice package. It is not going to be the obstacle, uh, the wire by itself. It's going to be uh, with surveillance equipment. What it's is going it to going to be? Alarm equipment. Well, quite clearly, I would not like to reveal what all would what be there. Terms? In broad terms, it would be a much, much uh, smarter system that will be uh, And you'll be able to deploy it across the Oh, yes, of course. We are, it is intended to be deployed across the LC. You've seen the kind of yes. terrain that especially in Kashmir region that we operate in. It's very, very difficult terrain at places. The ridge line is, uh, it's, it's hardly any width yeah. really. So yeah. it, it is designed to take in, factor in all of these challenges as it, as it were. Uh, now, apart from the IOS, of course, the manner in which we dispose our troops, mm -hmm. that also is, you know, regularly being reviewed. Like by the time we go transition into the summer months when the intensity of infiltration increases, we are looking at uh, an entirely reviewed set of dispositions that will obviously factor so in the lessons me, that we had learned from the last year. But tell me, sir, um, is it true that, you know, there used to be this old adage, it was coined by the Indian Army, uh, that, you know, once the passes snow over, then they don't generally tend to come in in terms of infiltrators. Is that now over? I mean, is the threat that you face throughout the year, even in snowbound areas? Well, that's a general notion. I would not, you know, abide... Because you've had high-altitude encounters as well. Sure, in the recent I mean, that, that's the general notion. I would not abide by it entirely. Why, again, if I can quote from my own experience here, February 2008, you know, uh, just near Karen, uh, well, we, I quite remember we had a contact. There were three terrorists eliminated. If I were to go back earlier in history, February 1948, I think one of the biggest, a yeah. uh, lot of infiltrators had come in from the same side. So one should not rule out uh, entirely. But then, of course, as the, if I look at the current levels of snow, there are some places which are no-go, and there are some places where, of course, it is possible. So even our dispositions, our deployments, our equipment, our intelligence, everything is geared to take on that. That's why we say it's a round-the-year effort. I mean, one can't say that, you know, winters, it will come down to zero or something like that. It doesn't happen like that. Mm -hmm. uh, final question. Um, when these infiltrators, as we've seen in, in recent encounters, they come in, tactically they're much more proficient on the ground than before. They move like soldiers and not just people who've been trained for a very short period of time. Uh, what does that indicate to you? Do you believe that, that there is training from the Pakistan army, from the Pakistan establishment, over and above what uh, the, the, the jihadi networks train them in? Uh, well, my sense is there is definitely an enhancement in the levels of specialization that is going into the training. That is one. And the second thing is uh, for the kind of equipment that get, they get along and uh, which clearly has markings which are suggestive of involvement uh, of uh, either the regulars or the intelligence agencies across, that's pretty evident. Uh, and it has been seen on a number of occasions. So final question, border action teams. This has been a concern. Um, what level, and I know that the Indian Army has responded to, to some of the incidents in the past. Uh, what level of threat do they pose for us on the LC? Well, I, the, the, the important thing is uh, that we need to dominate the entire area right up to the line of control, and of course, uh, that's physically, and beyond that by surveillance, of observation, and so on. As long as we are getting that right, usually we are able to, uh, you know, respond to that uh, challenge adequately. And as you would have noticed, it's been a while before we've been taken by surprise. And in short, all that I can tell you is, yes, the soldiers on the ground, you've seen them for yourself by day and night. Uh, they are very well prepared to take on any challenges that they are. All right, General Saha, thank you very much yes, for sir. speaking to us. Thank, thank you, you very much. You. Thank you. Well, the changing face of, uh, of infiltration in Jammu and Kashmir, how terrorists coming in are perhaps deadlier than they've ever been. It's time now for us to take a short break. Please stay tuned. तो फिर इस तरह मत करें।
ऑनलाइन लाइफ इंश्योरेंस प्लान अरे बहुत टाइम है यार अभी एक हॉलीडे प्लान ले चुप फैमिली के लिए बैकअप चाहिए बाद में बैकअप अब बैकअप और फैमिली को कौन देखेगा तू इतना जल्दी जल्दी है अरे तुझे क्या होगा अरे अरे गया लाइफ में कुछ भी हो सकता है सेव नहीं किया सेव किया पूरी फैमिली को क्योंकि कल कहीं देर ना हो जाए आज ही ऑनलाइन टर्म प्लान लेने के लिए मैक्स लाइफ इंश्योरेंस डॉट कॉम लॉग ऑन करें फैमिली फर्स्ट बाकी सब बाद में With a battery that lasts up to three times longer, Lava Iris Fuel. Good night, Robert. Good night, Lava Iris Fuel. We put the art in smart. Prepare yourself for the feeling of more water without using more water with the unique wave pattern of Delta H2O Kinetic Technology. Another way Delta is more than just a shower. See what Delta can do. Priya! I don't want to talk to you. Please go away to China. You yeah, understand. I have to go. You promised me, Rohit. But Priya... What did you say? पिया हम दोनों साथ में घर पे जाएंगे साथ में रोहित वैसे मैं सोच रहा था कि लिविंग रूम में ब्लू कर्टन होना चाहिए ना और ये लैम्प जो है ये स्टडी के लिए परफेक्ट है प्रेजेंटिंग द होम कलेक्शन ऑन फ्लिपकार्ट वाइट स्ट्रेंज ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स एंड डेकोर फर्निशिंग किचन एंड मॉल और कुछ मैडम हाउ अबाउट एक चाइना का टिकट अब घर बैठे घर से जाओ एक इशारे से क्या कुछ नहीं कर सकते थे आप जॉर्डन को पानी पिला सकते थे माइकल को खाना खिला सकते थे दुनिया को अपनी उंगली पे नचा सकते थे और आपने क्या किया हाथ हिलाते रह गए वो भी टैक्सी के लिए डाउनलोड कीजिए मेरू कैब ऐप एक बटन दबाओ और कैब हाजिर तो अब हाथ न हिलाओ बस ऐप दबाओ आई लव अमृत नाइन्टी नाइन एकर्स डॉट कॉम आरोप सारे ऑप्शन चेकआउट नहीं करेंगे तो परफेक्ट घर पे सेटल कैसे करेंगे नाइन्टी नाइन एकर्स डॉट कॉम सब देख लीजिए फिर घर लीजिए योर अचीवमेंट योर अपॉर्चुनिटी नाइन बाई फाइव सेंटीमीटर पेपर हैज इट ऑल द बिजनेस कार्ड इट हेल्स लॉर्ड अबाउट यू शॉर्ट टाइटल इक्वल लॉन्गर वर्क आवर्स लॉन्गर वर्क आवर्स मीन सैटर बैंक बैलेंसेज एंड इन टाइम इट चेंजेस योर स्टोरी sheds light on the miles you've put in from being a cafe office native to a corner office resident and as you emerge from the shadows it begins to tell a story your story you know your business card can take you places but you still choose to arrive differently the business card it does tell a lot about you but whom you choose to share it with says even more strive for more drive for more the skoda zeal edition skoda simply clever why do millions of men use mark 3 our zero wetness guarantee mark 3 has 50% less blade pressure the new design to let mark 3 zero wetness guarantee to let bhaiya ha malak chaloge साढ़े चार सौ लगेगा खर्चा हम्म बैठो सॉरी भी अब बस ले लूंगा जो करते हैं हर वक्त बचत की कोशिश उन्हें हम करते हैं सलाम तभी तो हम लाए हैं कम से कम होम लोन भी आकर्षक इंटरेस्ट रेट पर वो भी ढेर सारी सुविधाओं के साथ इंडिया बुल्स होम लोन अब घर आ जाओ सर पैंट्रॉनिक का पी ट्वेंटी टू पर है सर रियली क्रिप्ट महंगा लग रहा है ना वो तो उसका ट्रेलिंग पीई है उसका पॉवर्ड पीई सिर्फ फोर्टीन पर है इसमें ग्रोथ बाकी है मेरे दोस्त आई एग्री टोटल सिक्योरिटी द बेस्ट ब्रोकर इन इंडिया गिव्स यू द नॉलेज इन टेक्नोलॉजी टू ट्रेड कॉन्फिडेंटली सर वन आई वॉन्ट टेक अ लाइफ इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी आई विजिट द एल आई सी वेबसाइट इट्स सो यूज ऑफ फ्रेंडली यू कैन चूज अ पॉलिसी मेक अ प्रीमियम पेमेंट एंड डू अ लॉट मोर Why go anywhere else?
आप कदम बढ़ाइए अपना आय कर देकर अपना एडवांस टैक्स अदा करें इस महीने की पंद्रह तारीख तक आयकर विभाग द्वारा जारी Performance with tile. Gas is fantastical. An actor, an accomplished director, and an acclaimed musician with a wit to match. Farhan Akhtar has time and again proved that style is innate. His life and career is a clear expression of the fact that it is our passions and our interests that really define our style. We assure their happiness. Policy plans for everyone's need. Cashless hospitalization. 6,500 plus network hospitals.